Hey, this is Kathy, Crowder's Mountain in North Carolina. Now, I've been promising you guys these how-to videos for a long time, and I finally got to the place I think that I can finish them up. Um, got to throw out that southern biscuit and tell you I'm still dealing with all the surgery, so hopefully you can understand what I'm saying. I thought about just doing a video of how to tape and then I, were, I was going to do one about how to actually paint it so the more I thought about it and as I was taping the next uh, segment that you'll see in a minute I realized that if I'm going to show you how to tape it I've got to paint it at the same time really so I'm going to just do both of these in one at once instead of separating them into two videos. So here we go. In the last video, we looked at what kinds of tape that we could use in taping up our barn quilt before we painted it. So today, I'm going to show you how I tape. Now, other people have other ways and methods, and, and if it works for them then it's right. So there's no real wrong or right way. There's just different ways that work out better for other people. And this way <laughs> works out better for me. So let me show you. Of course, you know, this is the one we're working on. We'll eventually have that one. So I showed you how to make the circles, and I showed you how to... Uh, to make this pattern in another in another video. I'm not sure if you've seen that whole video or not yet, but you will get it. It's coming. Um, so what I want to do is show you that I'm going to be using this yellow frog tape. I think I'm going to tape the red first. So my red is every uh, every one here on the outside. And so before I put the frog tape down, what I'm going to do is use my little pinstripe tape here, and I'll show you. I like using this pinstripe tape, and I'll use a red that'll show up good for you. I've got a buzzard. Sorry. Had a buzzard flying around in here. Okay, I will be using this little red pinstripe tape. And I'm not so sure if I can bring you in a little bit closer so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'll start uh, about right here, and I'll go down I'm going to make sure you can see this good before I start. Okay, I'm going to start here, and I'm just going to go down and then circle back up. Put your finger down as you go, and it lays right on it and you just you just kind of move your right hand along with it and you see I'm going right along that line So that's half the circle. Now I'll do the other half off camera, but the other thing that I do, now see I'm going to be taping this, I'm going to be painting and taping this red on the outside so I don't have to worry about this 
the inside of the circle right now. But what I like to do with this, um, it's like a half inch tape, if I can find the end of it. Okay, so, so since, since we have the half circle here, and, and I think I've got it zoomed in enough that you can see it, I take this half inch tape, uh, I think I may have shown you this before, but I really didn't like it for taping the barn quilt up. But for taping along the edge of that little skinny tape, it works well. And it keeps it keeps it from bleeding. And that little skinny tape, little thin pin stripe tape, it keeps it from bleeding. But this just gives me a little bit more room to work so I don't have to take my brush and just barely go down through there. I can have my brush and, and, and if it gets off of the red onto the blue, I don't have a problem. It just gives me some more working room and I like that. And this, this curves pretty well too. But it really, I don't know. I don't know that it color, curves and um, molds with the line, and line as much as the little pinstripe tape does. But if you've got this kind of tape and not pinstripe, you can certainly try it. But see, I can feel ridges up through here and that's not what you want when you're laying down your tape that's actually going to keep the paint in place. So you see that? And I'll do this other part and I'll be right back. Now you see how I went all the way around and I'm back to where I started. So see how I started that one? Well now this one is will be coming through here and I will just lay it down right beside my line. And I've got a complete circle. See that? You see it? Now I'm gonna put the blue along here, uh, along along this edge, and I'll be back. So this is really going to help me when I'm painting these blocks here. Well, sections. It's not a block, but I think you call it a block on a barn quilt. <laughs> I'm not sure. All right. Let me show you how I will tape these up. Now, what you can do, what you can do, Okay, here's my red. I can come along here and I'm going to put my tape down right up against that line and I'll come here and put my tape up against that line. Alright, now I could leave it like that and skip this one and tape that one. Skip and tape, skip and tape. I could do that and there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, it just is easier for me if I'm going to, if I'm going to use red, then if I can tape all the red up at one time, that's what I like to do. So what I'm going to do here is I'm taking my razor. It's a... Uh, what do you call these little things? It's kind of as a paint scraper is what it is. And I just put it along my line and cut it. Let me show you this one. See, I'm just putting it along my line right here. And I'm just pulling that against the razor and cutting it. And if you have a little bit dangling, like I didn't cut that just exactly right, I can use my little razor to cut it again, but it works so quick that way. And when I'm taping, so I'm not painting this, but I'm making sure my tape is in line with that line 
so that I know I'm going to have a really straight, crisp corner and angle. So when I'm, I was showing you that a while ago, but usually what I do, I'll put my tape down and I'll just go ahead and cut it at the same time. Now I always cut a little bit longer so that way you have room to work. And unless you're one of those folks that are really, really patient. But I just, uh, I get to painting and sometimes I'm thinking about the painted area, the area that I'm painting, and I'm not thinking about the outside area and I'll get the paintbrush gets a little wild. So I hope you can see that. Can you see that, what I'm doing? This way I get to paint all that red at one time. Now, I have not drawn my border yet, and it has red in it, but I, I won't do that right now. Don't make me do that. Okay. All right, so once we've got it taped up, I use my little heat gun. It's just 300 watts. And I'll try to remember to link it below, but it's M Life. And I, I get them on Amazon, and you can get them in different colors. If you order one, make sure it says six foot cord, because, um, I have made a mistake before and got a three foot cord, which that's fine, but it, you know, just ain't gonna work as good as the six foot. <laughs> so here you go. We're just gonna get rid of our line. I'll have you zoomed in so that you can see what I'm doing. But I use these uh, little paint palettes here to get them from, uh, well, I think Hobby Lobby and Michaels has them. I'm not sure if Amazon does or not. I, I hadn't really looked. So for my red, I'm using heirloom red. I didn't want it to be too bright but I didn't want it to be really, really dark either. So I think the heirloom red looked better with the other two colors. So I'm using one of those plaid brushes that I talked to y'all about in another video. And what I do, I just barely get some on my paintbrush. And the way I do it, I paint down like beside of my paint, my tape. So you, 
the thing is to try not to paint into the tape. I know sometimes that gets kind of hard, but this paint actually activates that sealant in that tape. So hopefully by the time that you get the first coat down, it, it has sealed, and then if, if you buy my mistake, um, come along and paint into the tape the second coat, then it won't be so bad. Now, a, a lot of people have different ways that they paint. And, uh, you know, I'm sure if you were an artist, you have, you'd probably be laughing at the way I do it. So, I've got that. I'm going to finish the rest of it. Okay, I've got my first coat all the way around. I'm going to put two coats, two more coats. Now, I, I could let it go. You do not have to dry that paint. It can dry all by itself, but if you want to, you could use this little heat tool that I tell, told you about and just go over it. We'll keep it moving. Don't let that heat get too close. It's just like with a hair dryer. It will bubble your paint. But see how I painted that? And you can see the white through it. If you can't see the white through that first coat, you've got it on too thick. And that can cause your paint to peel. So go real slow. Just take your time and enjoy the journey. <laughs> Make a real thin coat all the way around and then take your little heat tool or let it dry by itself and dry it and when it cool down you can put your second coat on. Dry it again and then put your third coat on. And if you need to, put a fourth coat. It's better to put four coats than it is to not have the shade of red that you were after. And a lot of times with red, uh, or a dark green, or s even sometimes dark blue, you have to put more coats on. And a, a trick that you could do is put like a gray and then start painting. But I have told y'all before, I don't see the difference. If I'm going to put four coats, I might as well just put four coats of the same color. Um, but you will get, you you'll, if you put the gray down and then put three coats of you're red, you're going to get the true color that you're looking for. So either way that you want to do it. All right. I'm going to dry that and put two coats on it, two more coats, and we'll decide whether we need that fourth coat or not. I don't know if you can see this or not, but I can tell after three coats and they're dry, I could tell it's kind of uneven. So I'm going to put a fourth coat on here. And what I like to do, if I put four coats on, now, you do it your way, because that's what I always say, but what I like to do is, if I put four coats on, I like to walk away from it. Instead of drying it with my heat gun, um, I want to say heat tool because it's kind of like a mini heat gun. Um, and can you say that? I don't know. It's a heating tool. I'll, let's just say that. Anyway, instead of drying it with that, I like to just walk away from it and let it dry on its own. Give it a couple hours. And there's always something else you could be doing. Like I could be painting this if I wanted to inside. Um, but I probably won't. I'll just go ahead and just walk away from it and let it dry by itself. And I'll be back in a couple hours. Okay. I'll let it dry. And then let's see. Let me see if I can start pulling the blue off first and we're going to see what we have.
Y'all know what I've got this board sitting on. It's a cake spinner. <laughs> I've got a, a, a couple of homemade Lazy Susans around here. I use those too. There's lots of different things you can use. blue off. Let's start taking that pin stripe off and see what we got. Now you know I had to pin stripe it again here to paint this section. To paint this section. I have to pin stripe it here to paint that. So pin stripe it. <laughs> Tape it with pen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'll have to take the pinstripe tape and go along the edges again once I start to paint this background. Can you see that coming off? I'm pulling it away from the paint. Let's start looking at this now. These little strips are so little. You know, and if, if I was not doing this on camera, I would be trying to save them little old strips. Can you see that coming off? Get you down here. There you go. If I can keep twirling it where I can see it, we'll be all right. I definitely could use the other side. Okay, we've got it all pulled off now. Kind of hard to keep it in that uh, camera. But anyway, now we've got the red. Now what I think I'm going to do is do this color, which is yellow. Now we used the heirloom red here, and I'm going to use chickadee yellow for this part. Now, here you go again with the tape. Can I have a red one laying around here? Yeah, here it is. Wanted to Let's see what I'm doing. I hope my fingers are not in your way. What I'm doing is just going around the edges and I'm going I'm on the inside here now see this right here you, you, can you see that line I didn't hit that right so I'll fix that in a minute the one good thing about this tape it just kind of molds with molds with your finger just molds to that well or you know you know what I'm talking about it gets real close to that line and I just I'm just taking my finger and moving it along and if I don't get it close then I can just pull it back up like that and do it again
So I may fast forward a little bit of this. Do you see what I'm doing? So I need you to see how I take my circles. See how crooked that is? I didn't get it exactly right, did I? So just go back and look at it. Like every time you do a little section, just kind of go back and no matter uh, whether you got all these other blocks or not, really doesn't matter. Just go back and look at it. Make sure you got your curve right. I remember the first time I did a circle, I had one of my grandkids down here, and I said, I don't, there's something wrong with that circle. And she said, well, it looks like you dropped the circle and you have a flat end. <laughs> Honestly. That's what I needed from her was honesty. I got it. Okay, see we got that circle drawn on there or taped up. Now I'm gonna put the old trusty blue back on it too. I always have trouble finding the end of this for some reason. There you go. So I just got it started right here. And I'll come back around and fix that. So since you've already seen that part when I did that, I'll fast forward this. But I'll See, it, it curves fairly well to, to um, when you're going around the little pin stripe tape, it curves fairly well, enough to give you more painting room, but it would not work to go around that circle by itself, because it just, it will not bend as good as that pin stripe tape will. And if you, if you have a buckle, you know, a little fold, that's going to let paint slip through. So, or bleed through. So you don't want to, you don't want that to happen. Okay. Now I have to tape these up. And it's going to be the same thing, just like I taped that. We're just going to make sure when you're putting that tape down, when you're putting that tape down, get as close to your uh, uh, pattern mark as you can, but line it up. See how I'm lining it up with the next one? So I, that way I'll know my, uh, my lines are going to be clear and crisp. My corners are going to be clear and crisp, um, but I don't have to cut that tape way back here. I'm going to, I'll cut it like this. See, I'm going to, I think I'm going to fast forward that since you saw that and you saw me cutting up here. So I can do all my yellow at one time, except for the border. I just thought of something. Here would be a good time if you had one of those tape dispensers that you can kind of judge how much you need to pull off without wasting tape. So if you had a tape dispenser, and I would show you mine, but I broke it. We won't go into that. <laughs> 
but I broke it. But you could just pull it off of the tape dispenser, you know, about two or three inches, and you wouldn't be wasting tape because you can kind of judge how much you need. But anyway, where you see me lifting and pulling and picking this up and laying it back down, the tape dispenser would be sitting over here and it would help you. And they make the big tape dispensers. I might, I might go get mine just to show it to you in a little bit, but let me get to taping. Okay, here we are. We've got it all taped up. Now remember what we do when we get through taping. We're just gonna go all the way around it. We're gonna press it down. Make sure we got a good seal. Now I usually take my heat gun then and get rid of my lines. Now that's just what I do. I really think that you wouldn't really have to do that because the paint, I guess if you're uh, painting with a light color, you might not need to, but the paint is wet. So it's almost like it's gonna wash it away when you're painting over top of it. So, but I just do, I do that mainly to make sure I can see my pattern really well, that I've got it taped on there right. Because sometimes you can miss a spot and you, you know, you're going around painting and you think, oh, I didn't even put any tape on that spot. So anyway, that's what I do. Now, I'm going to fill up another one of these little things. I'm not going to fill it all the way up. See, I didn't get that stirred up very well. I may have put flow troll in that and it come to the top. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's good. Make sure I get it stirred up good. I'm going to keep that in case I need some more of it. But the uh, description for these bottles or the place that you can get your bottles from will be in the description below. It's lolivefe.com L-O-L-I-V-E-F-E -E. And these are s still hard to say, y'all. But it's low lay vefe, and it'll be in the descriptions. So that was, this was heirloom, and this is chickadee. So he, here's the thing with the yellow tape. It just kind of all blends together, doesn't it? But let me... Y'all saw me how I painted this, and I'm doing the same thing again. I'm just uh, getting down into that white and real, real, real thin coat. So that's all you have to do. You see why I need more room than that little bitty tiny pen stripe? That's what I do when I'm painting. So it, it would be very tedious work to try to stay right on that little thing right there. See, I couldn't do it. I would be biting this board in half. But I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't be biting nothing right now. <laughs> All right, let me finish this and I'll be back. So we have our yellow all taped up and painted I ended up putting uh, four coats on it after the third coat I'd probably be okay but I don't know I just wanted to wanted it to be dark as my original color 
so I just wanted that shade to be right. And one thing I uh, wanted to mention, you probably figured this out if you've made barn quilts, but when you're going around in a circle like this, or you have a lot of uh, places that you're taping up and painting, I just stick something here to tell me, okay, I'm back around, I'm, I'm back around again. I, I've painted all the way around and here's my stopping place, my starting and stopping place. But sometime, you know, I don't, if I got a little scrap of tape, I might lay it down there, but sometime I'll just put my paint scraper here. Well, I call it my tape cutter, but I'll just put it there and so I'll know where I'm stopping at. So just a little tip here, and in case I didn't say this, I was using a 5 8 angled brush. This one particular one is from Plaid, but and I'm just washing it out every time I use it, and I'll reuse it for the next color. Alright, I'm going to let this sit here for a while and dry really, really good. And I'll be back in a little bit to pull that tape off. And we're going to paint the other color now. See you in a bit. All right, so I think you get the idea of how I'm taping up the circles and the, the little blocks. So all I'm gonna do now is tape this up. And for this block, see, I, I don't have to tape the circle. I've already done that. So we're finished with taping circles now. And I think you get the gist of how I tape up everything else. Next color we're going to put on there is Autumn Blaze. And it's going to be between the red and the yellow. And I'll be back when I get to this part. Let me show you something really quick about taping. You see how I put my tape down here? Okay, I'm going to tape up this right here. This little piece. Now when I'm putting my tape down, I'm letting just a tiny, tiny bit of that red show. I don't even know if you can see it. It's so thin. But I don't want to go over the red because it'll leave a white strip. You know, you, you, won't, get the, you won't get the whole entire uh, spot painted. And see how I've got along here? Can you see that? Anyway, just when you're laying your tape down, just make sure you can see just a tiny bit of that color. And then when you paint it, it covers that little, little tiny, tiny bit up. But you don't have any white, uh, you don't have any white showing through. It'll get the whole block. And y'all just remember now, when you're when you're putting this down and eat, and lining it up over here, hold it down kind of firm, and then tear up 
if you don't, your tape will get kind of raggedy looking and you won't get a clear, crisp, clean line. So let me finish this. Do the, I noticed a spot where my line, uh, my pattern, kind of got off kilter for a, a, I don't know if you can see this or this. No, it was right here. That that I just messed up. This one. You see how my pattern got off a little bit when I was uh, drawing it. Well, I fixed it with the tape. So you could see it when I was laying the tape down, you could tell it. So I just fixed it with my tape and, and that's no problem now. You see, these are all guidelines that we put on there a while ago, or earlier, I should say. All right, well, almost finished. if I have that or not. Okay, I'm going to just press it down with my card and get rid of my pattern lines, my heat erasable pen lines, and I'm going to paint Autumn Blaze, probably four coats. We'll see. Alright, since we're talking about taping, let's talk about peeling it off too. I've showed you a, a little bit about peeling it off that circle and some of the other places, but I thought since I had this orange Autumn Blaze painted that I would peel some off. And what I do is I peel it away from the tape, away from my where I painted. So you see that's the yellow paint and the orange. I'm just peeling it away. Now see, I'm, I did that on purpose. I fixed that streak here, that line, with my tape. And I knew I had missed that place because I had my line in the wrong place. So I can fix that. That's no problem. Let me see if I can get it around here so you can see some more. I won't do it all. I just wanted to show you how I'm peeling that off. And again, if I was just doing it by myself, there's nothing wrong with this other side of this tape. There's nothing wrong with that side. And you could use it again. So I don't paint. Um, I don't. I don't paint volume because I don't need to. I don't need to make a living at this, y'all. I'm just doing it for fun and to show you guys. And um, you know, I love my YouTube channel. But if you were doing this and you had four or five going on at one time. Saving them little old pieces of tape would just be a nightmare, I would think. But anyway, I've got that peeled off. Let me peel a little bit of this off. And then, 
I want you to see this and and then I'll peel the rest of it off. See? Looking good, isn't it? All right. I'll be back. Okay, four. I told you I would come back. So this uh, diamond shape, this diamond shape, and these two are going to be the same colors. So that's the ones that I am taping up right now. And you see how I did that? I lined it up with that line in both directions. I'll do that. I'll do another one. So I'm not painting that one. So I'm lining it up with that one. And then bringing it down here to my line that I drew, my pattern. I'm going to make sure I hit that center mark right there and I'm lining up with that line and this one now that's going to get you a really crisp corners are going to meet and the lines are going to be straight now I'm going to do these two and paint but I wanted to let you see how I did that one I may come back and do these, but you see how I taped up the, see I got a little curve on each side of these, on each end of the peace sign. I've got a little curve because of my circle. So I went ahead and taped that up so I don't have to worry about getting paint inside my circle. Now you guys see this? You guys see this? I just pull that off and I'm not going to waste this tape. What I'll do is just turn it around when I get it all pulled off and I know this is good and dry, I'll turn it around and put it here and I can tape that section and I'm saving tape that way. So I just wanted to show you that right quick before I forgot it. Okay, can you see how I lined my tape up? I lined it up with this triangle here, with this diamond. And up here I lined it up with that diamond. Over here with that one. And down here with that one. So my points are going to come together really well when I get finished. They'll be pretty, y'all. All right, I'm trying to show you my paint as I go because I keep forgetting to put it in the description or I keep forgetting to show you at the end. One of these days is going to make me a big sign that's going to stick over here near the window and it's going to have all my points that I'm trying to make. <laughs> so I don't forget so much. But anyway, this green was Vegas green. And I showed you the other ones. Now, here, I'm getting ready to put Precious Sapphire. And it's going to dry a really, really dark blue. But it's so pretty. Okay, I'll be back. So here you go. We've got the peace sign. And we've got the circle drawn. The only thing I have to do now is just paint the background black. Now I'll be taping up this circle again, inside and out. I'll do it the same way that I did it before. Now I still have to put my border around it before I paint it black. I'll probably do that next. But I'll show you, that's just really simple blocks. So I'll show you that in the video where I show you the complete pattern. But well, this one was just more about taping and painting. The next one will be about sealing and hanging. And I'll probably do that in both. 
or, or I may even do it in two. You'll see. <laughs> so I'll see you all in the next video.